Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode 4 of Nama's Bronze to Diamond Journey. Thus far, we've covered CSing, recalling, and basic wave management. This week, we'll tackle the fundamental trading tips that every mid laner needs to know in order to succeed. But first, let's take a look at the impact those previous lessons have had so far. Nama has been climbing incredibly quickly, already making it to Gold 3. It's a great sign of improvement, especially since he started with around a pitiful 30% win rate in ranked at the start of the series. We're not shocked at all, considering a lot of the fundamentals that we've touched on are largely ignored in this elo. As a small note, his improvement may seem unnaturally fast. Obviously, there's delays between content that we put up on the site and when we choose to upload it here, and the reason that he's gold 3 is because he has two extra lessons on top of the one that we'll be discussing today. Within this time, he's also completely dropped Talon in favor of Lucian. He just didn't like Talon, which is totally fine. Just like the other three champions, we've released a mini Lucian guide on itemization and combos on the site for Nama and whoever wants to check it out. Lucian is especially on theme with today's guide, since he can be such an aggressive mid laner who loves looking for trades. And as a quick reminder, there's absolutely zero background coaching going on so the exact same experience he's receiving throughout all of this is available to our subscribers. As always, each lesson we give Nama is uploaded to our site in full, and the guides you see here on YouTube are just based on those lessons. With that in mind, let's get into today's lesson, trading. Beating your opponent through trades can be one of the most rewarding ways of winning, while also being one of, if not the most difficult things to master in the game. There's no greater bliss than establishing your lane kingdom and getting to say mid diff at the end of the game. Unfortunately though, there's an insane amount of different matchups in the game which change based on levels, items, runes, wave positioning, etc. Learning all of these takes time and is no easy feat. But what we can do is talk about the basic fundamentals that go into almost every lane. There are key concepts you need to know before you can even begin thinking about trying to learn specific lane matchups. One of the first things to know about trading is that most trades are in some way based around what is going on with the wave. The whole point of minion waves is obviously to get gold from them. To get gold from them, you need to last hit them. And to last hit them, you need to auto attack or cast a spell on them as the creeps get low. Duh. This basic concept is the simplest and yet most effective trading technique to master. But more often than not, players in low elo are not thinking about this enough. A lot of their trades and ability usage is entirely random. This leads to more missed skill shots and wasted opportunities. In that clip, Nama used his Q twice on TF and missed both times. Knowing that you should time your trades around minion waves, what do you think Nama could have done to make his Q much more likely to land? If you said to wait for TF to last hit minions, you would be correct. Once you don't have to think too much about last hitting the enemy minions, you should try and start paying attention to your own minions and seeing which ones are getting low. Your opponent has to stand still to auto attack them or cast a spell to kill them. This simple tactic is the best way of guaranteeing that your skill shots land on your opponent. Throwing your skill shots randomly is not a good use of your limited mana bar. Pay attention to your own minions HP and plan your trades accordingly. The next step to using minions during trades is to take last week's lesson and build a slow push whenever you can. Abusing slow pushes for trading is also one of the core fundamentals you must learn. A big reason for this is because of how creep aggro works. Whenever you auto attack or use a targeted ability on an enemy champion, then all nearby minions will aggro onto you. When you have a slow push, this is useful in two ways. One, because you have the wave advantage, the enemy wave is likely very weak. Even if you draw a creep aggro, not a lot of minions are going to damage you. Two, if your opponent fights back, then your huge wave will aggro onto them. If they overextend for the trade, they might end up taking a ton of minion damage, winning you the trade by default. Okay, so we'll be giving Nama homework in a lot of these guides that you may want to do as well. One of the most important times where slow pushes come into play is in ranged versus melee matchups, which Nama struggles in because he has no idea how to punish them yet. So, we recommend watching our melee versus ranged guide on the site that breaks down exactly what you should be doing to punish melee champions, as well as how they're looking to punish you. Next up is playing around ability cooldowns. This is, once again, a basic concept that is usually messed up. 
Your opponents will inevitably use their abilities on the wave, usually when there's a last hit that they can't get with their auto attack. So you should usually wait for them to waste at least one of their abilities before hard committing into a trait. Like in this example, Annie has her Q and stun ready, yet Nama randomly walks into trait. He could have very easily waited for Annie to farm a minion and waste her stun before going aggressive like this. You can actually take this concept a step further. Not only should you play around the cooldowns of your opponent's abilities, but also their auto attacks. If you think about it, the auto attack also has a cooldown of around one second. We've already established that you should be timing your skill shots around enemy auto attacks, but you can also throw in extra damage by moving forward to auto attack them as they last hit. For example, let's look at this Twisted Fate clip once more. TF is notoriously exploitable with this concept. His auto attack puts his W on a slight cooldown since he obviously needs to auto attack to use it. And without a gold card, TFQ is really hard to land as well. As TF approaches this minion, Nama could be barely outside of his auto attack range. That way, when TF walks up to hit it, Nama walks forward, auto attacks, and QWs TF, then walks away for free. Just keep in mind that this tip is a lot more important during the early laning phase when auto attacks are a meaningful source of everyone's damage. For example, trying to do it versus a level 9 Syndra is just going to result in you getting extremely punished. She definitely does not need that auto attack to kill you. And that's basically it for trading fundamentals. These are the key concepts that are the baseline for trading in almost every matchup. With that in mind though, Hector gave Nama a very strict rule when it comes to trading, which stems from this following belief. I'm going to tell you straight up that our my goal is to get you to diamond, and getting to yeah. diamond is knowing basic fundamentals, and I don't think trading is required for that. Right. It's not that trading won't make you a better player, it's a skill you should learn, but it isn't a skill you need to go ham on and super learn, in my opinion. The rule Hector placed on this belief is that if Nama is ever below 60% health, that he must cease trading at once. Yes, there are exceptions, like if he's at 50% health and his opponent is at 5% or something extreme like that. The idea behind this rule isn't to get Nama to play like a KDA player, but rather so that he focuses on one of the most important concepts when it comes to League, not dying. Dying is obviously the worst mistake you can commit in this game. If you die, it allows your opponent to do whatever they want. They can shove the wave for free and get turret plate gold, get a recall, roam to a side lane, or secure an objective while you're dead. You give up so much pressure when you die, and you should practice being safe above all else. Once you start dropping to low health levels, it's very easy for anyone to just come into your lane and kill you, regardless of how hard you were winning trades. 60% health is a good threshold for learning to trade, even with this rule. At this elo, Nama technically shouldn't be dipping below this HP level anyway, because most players don't know how to trade effectively. It should be a good benchmark to see if he's trading properly. Likewise, you may wonder, well, if dying is so terrible, shouldn't I be trying to kill my opponent as much as I can? Well, Hector is a firm believer of the timeless quote from The Odd One that solo queue isn't about outplaying your enemy, it's about waiting for them to outplay themselves. Your opponents will generally find ways to kill themselves. You don't need to do anything most of the time. Of course, this isn't a rule that we're necessarily telling you all to follow. This is just a personalized rule Hector gave Nama that he believes will help him get better faster. If you don't like it, then trade to your heart's content. All right, so we're ramping up the questions from two to three on our weekly quiz. Question number one, why are breakpoints based specifically on caster creeps? Because they are the furthest minions away and getting close to kill them leaves you exposed. So you wanna know how to kill them as quickly as possible. Question number two, when the enemy wave crashes with your own wave at your tower like this, what can you expect to happen? A bounce back slow push is the correct answer, because your wave will stall here and then the next crash will end up here. And question number three, how much gold do you passively gain per second? The answer is about two gold per second, which is always useful to keep in mind when calculating your base timings. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this guide. We hope you all enjoyed and we'll see you next week.